Section one. You will hear a young student, Andrew, ringing an employment agency, inquiring about their services. First, you have some time to look at questions one to seven. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hello, is this the Triple A Employment Agency? Yes. Hi, I rang before. My name's Andrew, Andrew Peterson. I rang you earlier and gave you my personal details. The student's name is Andrew Peterson. So Peterson has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Now listen carefully and answer questions one to seven. Hello, is this the Triple A Employment Agency? Yes. Hi, I rang before. My name's Andrew. Andrew Peterson. I rang you earlier and gave you my personal details. If you remember, I'm that student looking for work during the summer holidays. Oh, sure. Actually, I have your file right here, but we still need to add some further information. Yeah, that's what they told me, and that's why I'm ringing. What do you need to know? Well, we have to know your main level of education. It's a degree, I suppose. Yes, but I'm still doing it in engineering. It's quite interesting. Some of my friends are studying computing, though, so I'm interested in that also. Well, I'll just write in your main degree subject, engineering. We usually have a demand in computing, though. Have you worked with computers before? No, I just do some programming for fun at the university. But I almost got a job as a computer designer once. Actually, the only job I've ever had was as a car salesman. Believe it or not. Well, at least you've had experience dealing with customers. What about hobbies, though? Sometimes they can help develop useful skills. Um, in my free time, I don't do much. Mostly study. I play chess occasionally at the university chess club. That's right next to the tennis courts. But I'm not interested in that. Chess helps develop analytical skills, so I'll put that down. Of course, it's your main skills that employers want to know about. What would you say they are? Well, I'm in my third year now, studying electrical machines and generating systems. But I'd say electronics is my best skill, much better than, say, my machine skills, which aren't so good actually. Okay, machine skills are in demand, but so too are electronic ones. So we might be able to find your part-time job in that field. But what sort of money do you expect to get? Oh, anything really. I'd want the standard payment, let's say. What's normal? One thousand a month? One thousand five hundred? I'll just put one thousand two hundred dollars, okay? That's fine by me. When can you start? Say within two days? Easily. Actually, less. In fact, just give me a ring, and I'll be able to start immediately. Although I admit it'll take me a few days to get used to getting up early in the morning. Okay, that's just about it. Unless you'd like to add anything else, which may help with your application. Ah,、uh, not really. I ride a motorbike, but that's unimportant. I'm friendly, but every applicant claims that, right? I can speak another language. Ah, that might be useful, depending on the language. Is it Chinese? A Chinese speaker would go down well. Spanish, I'm afraid. You see, I grew up with some friends who came from South America. Okay, I'll write that down. But I don't think it will help that much. Sorry to say. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions eight to ten.
Now listen and answer questions eight to ten. Well, thanks for your help, and hopefully I'll get a job soon. But can I just ask one more question? Sure. What basically are employers looking for when they interview someone? Ah,、oh, many things. Being hardworking, diligent, and focused on your job is good. But surprisingly, it often means you can't see the bigger picture, or provide suggestions which help the company move forward. That requires thinking for yourself, outside the box, as they say, and being free of the standard ways of approaching tasks. Employers certainly value that. I guess experience must help, though. It depends. If it involved a routine job, one which didn't exercise your mind, it might not mean that much at all. But since companies are basically composed of people, it is important to be able to get along with others. There's no point in hiring someone whom the other employees don't like, right? That just causes problems. In fact, I would say that being friendly and approachable ranks far more highly than your academic qualifications. Okay, and that's all assessed at the interview, right? Yes, and your qualifications, experience, and approach to the job, such as whether you can do different things, work overtime, or do long hours, is needed. But those latter qualities are pretty much standard. What may be more important is based on the fact that things inevitably go wrong. Mistakes are made, and someone's got to fix them in a way that creates the least disturbance. People with demonstrated abilities to do this are certainly regarded highly. I see. That's very interesting. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. You are going to hear a talk given by an international student. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to sixteen. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions. As an international student coming from Sierra Leone, it gives me great honor to give these opening remarks and welcome you all to Ashisi University, where excellence is the code. I believe I speak on behalf of my fellow colleagues when I say we feel that we are the most fortunate and privileged university students in Ghana. You may ask, what is the basis of such a conclusion? And I will simply say to you. In which other tertiary institution in Ghana do you find the same level of IT infrastructure and facilities available to students? Where also do you find such a low ratio of students to lecturers and computers? In which other educational institution do you find 55% of students on some sort of financial aid, who in addition enjoy services and benefits such as job placement after graduation, on-campus employment that pays above the minimum wage? A supply of textbooks and access to online databases. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no other institution of higher education in Ghana today that matches the learning environment and the quality of instruction at Ashisi. I could continue listing reasons why we students feel this way, but I only have five minutes for this speech. Believe me, I could go on for hours. At Ashisi, everyone is considered a leader and is treated special. Ashisi equips us with the necessary determination, strength, and belief in ourselves to be able to achieve our goals. We are being taught to think outside the box and to question and challenge our assumptions about the world we live in. This, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the benefits of a liberal arts education, which seeks to broaden our intellectual capacity. Now look at questions 17 to 20.
As the talk continues, answer questions 17 to 20. At Ashisi, we are also exposed to real-life situations and learn how to deal with them through a practical and vigorous academic program, as well as various seminars in which prominent leaders in their professions are invited as guests to interact and share their knowledge and experiences. Some people, even some of you in this audience, may believe that tuition at Ashisi is too high, but I say to you that the students here are unanimous in saying it is worth it. Not because we all come from well-to-do families, but because when it comes to one's education, you need to aim at getting the best from the right place. One's education defines who you are and what your perception of life and society will become. Ashisi offers us a top-quality education which meets high international standards. This is due to the strong linkages the school has established with three of the very best schools in the United States, namely Swarthmore College, which is ranked as the best liberal arts school in the U.S., UC Berkeley, and the University of Washington. In addition, Ashisi has recruited an excellent faculty consisting of lecturers from various countries, including Ghana, the U.K., and the United States. These lecturers are among the best in their respective academic fields. I believe this is the school's greatest asset, a strong and knowledgeable team dedicated to achieving successful results from their students and who also love their job. I would like to end with a personal message. My fellow students, because we are among the most privileged in our society, we should take responsibility for our own destinies, make our parents proud, and create a legacy for those that follow us and Africa as a whole. We must give back to our society after completing school and achieving our goals in life, which I believe we all can if we properly utilize our time and take advantage of all that is offered here at Ashisi. This is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. Section 3. You will hear two geography students talking. An older student, called Howard, is giving advice to a younger student, called Joanne, on writing her dissertation. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now listen and answer questions 21 to 24. Hi, Howard. I haven't seen you for a while. Oh, hi, Joanne. Yeah, they're keeping us really busy on the postgraduate program. Mm -hmm. But how are you? You'll be starting your dissertation soon, won't you? Yeah, tutorials start next week. I've got Dr. Peterson. You'll remember it all from last year, of course. Oh, it's not something you forget easily. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, although I didn't expect to enjoy writing my dissertation, and in fact I didn't really find it much fun, mm. I wouldn't have missed the experience. I found it really improved my understanding of the whole degree programme, you know, from the first year on. Right. So what are you doing yours on? Glaciated landscapes. Although I haven't decided exactly what aspect yet. Mm, I did mine on climate systems, so I can't help you much, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll be fine once you start your tutorials. Dr. Peterson will help you focus. I know, and he'll set me deadlines for the different stages, which is what I need. 
my concern is that I've got tons of material on the topic and I won't be able to stick to the word limit, you know. Mm, I remember I had different concerns when I was doing my dissertation. Last year. Yeah, before my first tutorial, I did a lot of fairly general reading because I hadn't fixed on my topic at that stage. Mm. I actually enjoyed that quite a lot and really improved my reading speed, you know, so I was getting through a lot of material. I was frightened I wouldn't remember it all, though, so I got into the habit of making very detailed notes. So, did you find your tutor helpful in getting you started? Yeah, we certainly had some interesting discussions, but it's funny, I saw a brilliant programme about climate change, and it was that that really fired me up. Oh. It was talking about some recent research which seemed to contradict some of the articles I'd been reading. Mm. Now you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. So you say your tutorials start next week? Yeah. Well, the first month's crucial. You've got to meet your tutor and decide on your focus, but don't become too dependent on him. You know, don't see him every week, only when you want to check something. Right. Once you've got the focus, you've got to get reading. Mm. It's helpful to look through the bibliographies for all the course modules relating to your topic and get hold of any books you think you'll need. I haven't got much money. I mean, get the books from the library. Far better. And I suppose I should prepare a detailed outline of the chapters? Yeah, absolutely. But don't feel you have to follow it slavishly. It's meant to be flexible. OK. Now, I'm someone who likes to get writing quickly. I can't just sit and read for a month. <laughs> Not like me, then. <laughs> <laughs> but if that's what suits you, you know, your natural approach, then you really ought to start immediately and write the first chapter. Right. Now, Joanne, about the library, mm. it's worthwhile getting on good terms with the staff. They aren't always helpful with undergraduates. I suppose they focus on postgrads more. Mm, maybe. But show them you're serious about wanting to do good work. And what if I can't find what I need? Well, there's interlibrary loans. Borrowing books from other libraries, but I've heard it isn't all that reliable. Mm, you're right, but you probably won't need it anyway. Be positive. <laughs> the library is likely to have most things you need. And during the dissertation writing period, you can take out 15 instead of the usual 10 books. Should I look at previous year's dissertations? You can do. But I won't know which are the good ones. The library only keeps the best, and the staff can advise you. Are they willing to do that? Oh, yeah. And I'm worried about getting journal articles from the electronic library. Well, have you tried to find any yet? No. Well, you should. It's really straightforward. That's obviously something I'll have to look into. Dr Peterson will help. Yeah, I know I can go to him if I have any worries. Except he will be away in the second month. Oh. It's the holidays. You should ask him what to do while he's away. Gosh, yeah. But I suppose I can get a lot of support from course mates. I know a couple of people who are thinking of doing the same topic as me. Take care. Collaboration can become dependency. I think you'd better see how that works out, what the people are like. You're probably right. About other reading, I suppose Dr Peterson will recommend plenty of good articles to get me started. One thing I'd find out is what his attitude is to internet sources. Surely not in this day and age. I'd better get that sorted out right at the beginning. I would if I were you. And I've also got some questions about the research sections. How much time I should spend explaining the process? Well, I think that's up to you. You can see how it develops as you're writing. OK. It's the same with things like time management. That's something a tutor can't really help you with. I agree. So, is there anything else you need me to go over? 
That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section four. You're going to hear a short talk about the banks in Britain. As you listen, complete the statements by writing no more than three words in the spaces provided. Now you have some time to read questions thirty-one to forty first. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for turning up today to this short talk I'm going to give on student banking. Many of you are unfamiliar with the way banks work in this country, and today's talk should give you a few starting points. Well, as you probably know, you'll need to open a bank account while you're here. The safest place to keep your money is in a bank. Choose one that is near where you study. All the major banks in Britain offer special facilities for students. And we'll be only too happy to explain how to open an account. The most useful type of account is a current account. You can pay in money received in any form, and then draw it out when you need it by using your cheque book. Writing out cheques in their name can make payments to other people. If you want to draw out cash for yourself, make the cheque payable in your own name or to cash. A cheque crossed with two parallel lines is even safer. As it must be paid into a bank account, payment by cross check has the added advantage that when the person to whom you have given the check presents it at a bank, it will eventually come back to your bank and provide proof of payment. Most people now ask their bank to supply only ready crossed checks. Most banks don't make charges if you keep more than a certain amount of money in your account. However, you shouldn't overdraw on your account. Withdraw more money than you have in, without the bank's permission. If you borrow money from the bank, there will be an interest charge. You will also have to pay a small charge to convert foreign currency paid into your bank into sterling. If you have more money than you need for month-to-month -month expenses, it is a good idea to open a deposit account for some of it, where it can earn interest. This interest is taxable, but if your bank knows that you are not normally resident in Britain, then you do not pay tax on it. You can't pay by check on a deposit account, and to withdraw money, you should give the bank seven days' notice, or you'll lose seven days' interest. When you have established yourself as a satisfactory customer with the bank, they can issue you with a check card. This is really an identity card, which guarantees that correctly written checks up to the value of fifty pound will be honoured by the bank. A check card can be very useful, as many shops and enterprises, particularly in London and the cities, will not accept a check unless a check guarantee card backs it. You can also use it with your cheque book to draw up to fifty pounds cash from almost any bank in Britain. If you also ask for a Euro cheque card, this can be used in the same way to draw cash from most banks in Europe. Many banks provide dispensing machines, generally set in the wall of a bank outside, where you can draw cash when the bank is crowded or closed. Provided you are a satisfactory customer, the bank can issue you with a cash card, which allows you to draw up to a hundred pounds a day.
That is the end of section four. You will have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you will now have ten minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet.